projects that you saw were done on mobile phones. So five days and um, paranoia was shot on an iPhone 8 Plus, so it was old. And, and um, the um, fell purpose was shot on the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max as well. So just to let you know, so if you ever want to make films, you shouldn't let the fact that you don't have a fancy camera get in the way. That's, that's the moral of the story. Um, so we have here um, Dylan. So he was Macbeth on camera, but he was not Macbeth voice. Macbeth voice was Robert Savansky, who's not here today. Um, Miller, who was sister two. Kalina, who was sister one. And also the wicked laugh. <laughs> um, and uh, I was, I'm Eric Philly, and I was the um, director and producer, and I adapted um, Macbeth for the, I shouldn't say that in the theatre, should I? Do I cross myself now or two, three times worse? Yeah, you're not on the door and come back in. Are you going to make me do it, Camilla? No. Okay. <laughs> and um, uh, unfortunately, um, Milena, who Milena Salustio, who was the director of photography and did a fantastic job, like so good, she was unable to be here today. Um, and Georgie, who was Lady Macbeth and the third sister, she couldn't be here either. What about the baby? <laughs> 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 And uh, Wes is sitting over there, he did the original score as well, and Ooh. Mick mixed the sound. So, you know, they did a fantastic job. So, yeah, give them a clap. Yeah. <laughs> and there were a heap of people, some who were here who helped out in different ways. Um, we shot it over two days um, in Dubbo. Um, and um, you know, thank you to everybody who helped in whatever way they did. So, any questions? Yes. Okay. Between the two films, like comparing the two films, um, which did you find um, more challenging, like script-wise? Because I, I know that um, you had to, like, you did the voice over. Like, how did? Which one was? Was more challenging to me? Um, I think they both had different challenges. I guess the thing with um, Five Days was we didn't really rehearse in per person um, because we were doing it all um, online because we were all in lockdown when we workshopped and rehearsed Five Days. So when we actually finally got together to shoot it, that's when we actually got to block it. Um, Fell purpose, I mean, there was some more, um, I guess the, it was a bit more complex, like different locations, um, but having the opportunity to plan a bit more and to practice, certainly to practice with all the movement, um, I mean, it wouldn't have gone that well if we just winged it on the day. Yeah, I didn't know where the first rehearsals. So, um, I think even though it was more complicated, um, it was probably smoother, apart from the um, mosquitoes and ants. <laughs> but Dylan saved us with uh, tropical strength. Um, what's the stuff? Oh, the <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, and I think also like we, before we shot Fell Purpose, so we had some ideas. Melina and I um, met with um, Gareth Tilson from Afters. And he gave us some tips about, you know, how to use a mobile phone most effectively, like taking, um, sort of throwing out some of the conventions of, of filming. Um, when you're filming with a mobile phone, throwing them out the window at night and kind of um, working to the strengths and the limitations of the mobile phone, which we didn't really have that kind of coaching for, for five days. And actually having the sound mostly in voiceover made that so much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because recording sound um, in situ and getting good quality sound is very challenging. Yes? What costumes do you prefer wearing the uh, apocalyptic or Kansas? <laughs> 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 I 
I would say fantasy, purely for the fact that one, it's fun, and two, uh, I was still getting over a surgery with five days, so wearing jeans and stuff when like the like uh, my surgery was on my stomach was very uncomfortable, and a flowy dress is a lot more comfortable. <laughs> I'd say apocalyptic. Um, it was more comfortable because they were just very comfy pants and t-shirt. Um, and also the harness that I was wearing for felt purpose, one of the straps was too loose and would just continue to fall down <laughs> so many times. And I was glad I had the cape on to cover it because I'm very sure that it fell down in like every single shot that we had. Um, so I would say five days stuff. Because it was just also my own things as well, like it was my own wardrobe, so I didn't yeah. need to stress it out like accidentally ruining it and stuff. <laughs> and the vest you were wearing, the leather vest, that was handmade by my father. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Like <laughs> they have some magnificent things out there because you guys do uh SEA. Yeah, recreate. Recreations, not recreations. Although they're recreational recreations, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they have some amazing stuff and it was great to be able to have that costume in there as well. Any other questions? Yes, Camilla. How do you find coming together as a cast? So I know some of you knew each other before and you all know each other before and, and you know when you finally find that flow with rehearsals and because you had two totally different experiences by the sounds of with your rehearsals. I think we all knew each other slightly before. Like I think I knew, like I knew Georgie, Kira, and like Kalina, like for five days before we started. Um, so like it was really good to already know everyone, and then to have the online rehearsals, we just like just clicked immediately, and we would have the like script read through a couple of times here and there, and then we'd probably stay online for another ten minutes, just randomly just talking about like our characters and what we think of the plot. And, what, what we might change in all of this, and then to finally come back into person um, after all of the rehearsal, and then it, like none of that was lost because sometimes you might re meet with someone in person and it's just kind of like, oh, hey, okay. but it just it wasn't lost at all, and it was really um, we bounced with each other really well, and then to come back and felt purpose with um, the same cast minus Kira, unfortunately, and um, yeah, it was just the same thing so fun and so easy to just talk to everyone, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you came into five days though, you knew... I knew her. Miller. Yeah, that's right. You didn't know, and you knew, knew Mel, obviously. Yeah. But, um, but you didn't know um, Kira and Georgie. No, but we clicked fairly well. And I think like ever since then, we just kind of found like that little um, and every, even though we seemed to be doing a lot of projects together, because it was five days, then it was uh, paranoia, and then it was spell purpose, every time another project is over, we all get so sad, <laughs> because we're like, what if there's another project? Yeah. <laughs> this time the next one's done. <laughs> yeah, can we hurry along and figure out something else yeah. so we can get back together and do something? So... And you, and you and Georgie, you've also um, done some theatrical stuff with the Voices of Women. Yes. Where you've done some writing yeah. and performance with that. Yeah. And you and Georgie also have a musical collaboration at the moment too, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Plug it, Lena. <laughs> <laughs> Crimson Stitches. <laughs> we've already got a song out called Memory and we've got a few more on the way. You know, it's really boring and have only one song. We're gonna gonna keep pumping them out for as long as we can and milk it. But um, yeah, that's been really great with um, Georgie and Daniel Rodder. It's been really really cool. And there's gonna be a whole lot of different sounds, I think, too. Like not every song is gonna be kind of the same genre all the time. And yeah, it's been really fun. Georgie's great. Any other questions? Yes, Kim. Is there more room to push the use of mobile phones in filmmaking? Absolutely. 
I think people don't really realise what they can do. And so, you know, I know Melina and I, from our experience now with Felt Purpose, if we were to do something again, I think that we would do something even better. Like, I think we, um, like, one of the great things about mobile phones versus, like, big rigs and everything, like, big rigs can obviously give you amazing visuals, but it is, it takes a lot of time to set up and to change. And when we were in the field, we could just think of an idea and just do it and try it. And it's not like it took like, you know, half an hour of setup just to be able to do it. So I think um, mobile phones are advancing. So, you know, mine's a 13, Melinda's was an 11, the ones that we used on, on Fell Purpose. The 14 is even better. The Samsung's are supposed to be really good as well. So, you know, there's, um, I just think that mobile phones, I mean, I know some people cringe at the idea about anybody being a filmmaker, but really, if you make a film and you put it out there, you're a filmmaker. I mean, you can be a better filmmaker and keep trying to make better films. Um, but, you know, anyone can tell a story, and I think that that's a wonderful thing. And with a mobile phone, you can tell it really well. So, yeah. And I know, um, I mean, you use mobile phones in your work too, don't you, Kim? <coughs> Yeah, and it just makes life easier. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's not to say that there's not a, a you know place like um, a couple of months ago um, with um, both young filmmaker Bo Carter. Um, we shot a music video for Whisperhead using the Black Magic um, 6K Pro that um, Dubbo filmmakers have. But I loved it because he's like doing his diploma of screen and media and he just thought it was amazing being able, able to use this incredible device. And you get a totally different effect and there's, and there's a place for that. But, you know, I do like um, the flexibility of my mobile phones. Mm. Can I ask another question? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so um, we recorded sound, so a lot of the sound was voiceover, as you would have noticed, so we recorded it totally separately um, and mixed it in. So with the Lady Macbeth stuff, that sound was recorded in, in um, you know, as we were doing it because it was a performance. Um, and we used actually three different recordings. <coughs> so there was a Zoom, a Tascam, and off the camera as well. But in the end, we then did a, um, a post-production recording as well, because it was just too much noise, external noise. And unfortunately, where we were shooting, um, it was beautiful, like it looked gorgeous, but you caught all the noise from all around Dubbo on the um, camera. But Mick did a really good job of blending the, actually I think he used the on-camera ca sound with the um, post, um, post filming sound that George recorded and blended it in to kind of get that room noise and um, I played around with it to be able to make it sound hopefully much in the room. Um, but it was actually, Gareth was helpful in giving some feedback around making that sound, that um, dialogue sound more natural, um, but also we got to play around with the sound effects. You probably noticed the backwards talking. These girls are really talented, they can talk backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually, um, actually um, it's fair is foul and foul is fair, which is a quote from the Scottish flow. Um, and, um, and so they recorded it and we just played it back, we, yeah, just flipped it.
stayed with me. But I also feel like in a lot of Shakespeare's plays, the female characters get ripped off. Like they end up in places where where you wouldn't um, where you wouldn't um, yeah they're so strong to begin with and then they turn to water and you think no 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 that that wouldn't but I, I do like all the darkness and if you know the play you'll see there's a lot of Easter eggs from throughout the play in that short little bit um, if not come and if you didn't notice them like read Macbeth and then come and watch it at the One Eye Film Festival on the nineteenth of November <laughs> at the Regional Theatre. Um, and yeah, like I and I was, but in terms of like, is, it felt purpose. Um, my initial kind of references were the original Wicker Man and the Omen. But then I watched um, Bram Stoker's Dracula um, on, <laughs> on, um, on uh, ABC iView and that kind of like revisited all the feels for that, which is kind of Lady Macbeth stuff. And then um, there was the scene of, on um, House of the Dragon where there were lots of candles and she was wearing lots of rings. So I thought, yeah, I want that too. So, <laughs> so they're kind of some of the you know, reference points, but I do love a lot of the darker stuff of Shakespeare as well. So, how did I pitch it to you girls? <coughs> Quite easily. <laughs> um, it didn't take we, much. Yeah, it did not take much at all. She came, kind of came to us and was like, got this idea, think medieval, think fantasy, uh, probably some swords, and I was done. <laughs> uh, she, uh, honestly, and then, yeah, we kind of, we came into it um, for the rehearsals and even we were throwing out ideas to make it even darker and like, even if she had to reel us in a bit at <laughs> some point as well, she was like, okay, I have a lot actually. Um, yeah, so I think it was like a, a keen interest for us all to explore that, that different side of, of acting and, and filmmaking and, um, and creativity as well, like um, it's not, very, not every day that you get to do that, so um, I think it was a, an interest as well as a curiosity um, that went hand in hand with it, yeah. Oh, sure. Well, I was just going through Facebook and Quentin mentioned to you that they're looking for Macbeth, so I'm like, oh, I'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, and then I got told that I have to be uh, shirtless, and I'm like, well, I've been in, in front of the camera too many times without a shirt on, so I don't know if it's a problem. Kind of just dragged into it, really. You Pretty, no yeah. choice. Yeah. And Dylan contributed, I mean, what he did on camera was fantastic, but he contributed, he and his family, Karen as well, because um, we shot on their property. Um, they just helped so much. Like they made sure we could get the portaloo in position, and you know they they loaned us uh, props and and um, weapons for the um, battle scene. You know, like they were so helpful. So Dylan really went above and beyond, um, and so grateful. Same for five days as well. Yeah, yeah that's right. And it's yeah. the same like thing of how she pitched us to us for five days, where she kind of was like, "Hey, I've got this kind of idea. Have a read through the script. Tell me what you think." And we were like, "Love it. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent." And again, it was just the same thing of like we'd be there after the rehearsal and like, "What else can we do with this? Where else can we go with it? Can we do a sequel? Can we do a prequel? Can we do some more things with it? Like, what kind of makeup are we doing? Can we? Yeah." So it was really fun. Next project, I'm waiting for these guys to pitch to me so I can act in <laughs> <laughs> Now, there was a question. Sorry, I don't know your name. Andrew. Andrew. Uh, so, you uh, use uh, quite effectively paranoia, uh, I would say it's like an advertising uh, avenue for five days and the two pair extremely well together. Yeah. Given the fact that you have a cast and crew that have been working with each other for quite some time and the advent of can we expect that there perhaps will be a music video or a song developed for the purpose in the same way? <laughs> well, we have a lot of that, so <laughs> a crossover, right? Um, well, you know, there's a lot of talent in the Crimson, Crimson Stitches crew, there's a lot of talent there anyway, so, you know, I'm really happy to support, obviously, any projects, particularly, you know, Polina and, and, and Georgie and, and Villa, Dylan, for that matter. Um, <laughs> but they have, like, a lot of actual filmmaking talent within the Crimson Stitches universe, too. So, 
it would be nice to see a music video from them. Though. Because they, they are, uh, I mean, they're fantastic on camera. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Just take that nap, just drop that down. Keep your eyes on the post, follow on Facebook and Instagram and whatever else. That's right. Just uh, if you don't follow Studio 138 on Facebook and Instagram, check us out. Studio 138 Dobbo. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Michael. Sorry, was that? Were you scared? A little bit. When all the swords and that came out, I was a little scared. I was very worried. Miller, Miller in particular was oh, very okay. fond. Miller in particular was very fond of the blades. We had to supervise her closely. She was texting me and asking me to sharpen. <laughs> they were just really cool. Well, we might announce the winner of the dress ups. Thank you so much, everybody who, who dressed up. Now, there is another prize, which is a fell purpose mug, but we that hasn't arrived yet. So I'll have to um, line up with the winner to be able to um, get that to them. The what? The mug, yeah, you are the fault of this mug. So, Wario, in the back. multimedia version um, for anyone to enjoy. I've also tried to use a layout that's um, easy for people with um, who you know, learn differently to be able to to um, to access. Now, the, the actual audio files are not set up yet. Um, so that's why when you go to the QR codes, um, you're not, all you're going to hear is the audio files coming soon. So it'll probably be by the end of November that that's coming up, which is why if anybody's interested in grabbing one of the books, um, so um, I'm basically just um, cost recovery at $10 a book um, because it's, as I said, it's a beta version. I mean, I've already got ideas if I reprinted it, what I would do differently. And I've also got a friend who's vision impaired who I've been speaking to about, you know, how do we make visual and multimedia more accessible and part of her ideas is what is what's gone into the concept of this book. Um, but I'll also get her feedback to be able to do a better version, particularly for people um, who um, who have you know, vision impairments as well. So but if you would like a copy of the book. Let me know, and it's only um, ten dollars. If you haven't got cash on you, um, I'll send you a PayPal. Signing table, that's for ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs>